goes. I guess the color. Welcome to the CEN show where we present the voice of the community. The communityeducationnetwork.com is a platform to aid the effort of self and collective improvement. In your investigative time or spare time, visit the website and join the forum. I am your host, Rasaki Mascani. Tonight's topic is Black Insanity, doing the same thing, expecting different results, part two. Tonight's guest is Brother Thomas. Brother Thomas is back to continue this informative topic. Good evening, Brother Thomas. How are you? And what would you like to, to share about yourself this evening? Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to open up in the greetings. In the name of Allah, I've been the merciful. I've been witness that there's no God but Allah. I've been witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and the Ablus Farcon's divine reminder. And I greet my beloved brothers and sister in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, yes, um, I, as, as stated from my previous discussion, you know, I've been an educator for going on 15 years now, but I've always been in uh, conscious uh, community doing volunteer work. Um, I've been a member of the Nation of Islam for going on 30 years, um, so ever since I was like 19. Um, uh, the Nation of Islam has taught me certain ways to survive some of the most tumultuous experiences that the average black man experiences in America. And I think I, you know, I, I have a unique experience as it pertains to some of the challenges that the average black man has to experience in America. And I would like to share my experience and some solutions as it pertains to that. Um, I, I really feel that it's something that we don't really talk about and it's something that we uh, definitely are falling victim to as a people and, it, and it, as black men and women. And I would like to spend this uh, time, this, this session this, uh, to enlighten the community on some things that we do and that we definitely need to change or else uh, we won't be here long. Our elders in particular, anybody that is dealing with some type of health issue will not be here long to benefit the future generations of our children and our people as a whole. Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. So we would like to hear your presentation. Yes, sir. Um, I've been, I've, as, a, as a youth, I was, I've been dealing with a, uh, a um, pre-existing health condition. Um, since I was 16. Um, I was diagnosed at the age of 16 with kidney failure. And uh, all throughout my life, um, I have been living with that, successfully living with kidney failure. Um, there is no cure real, really for kidney failure. All you have are different modalities. Is that what they call them? Modalities, different ways in which you, you survive with kidney disease by using different, different um, different ways, different what, what, what they call uh, I'm sorry, mo modalities, I would say would be more like treatments, treatments that, you, that, that they give you to survive. And there's a list of treatments. There's a list of different types of treatments that people experience when, they when they're uh, dealing with kidney yeah. failure. Um, it's like, it's a, it, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have heard of dialysis. A lot of our elders get dialysis. A lot of our brothers and sisters that are diabetic, they eventually uh, get, you know, ha have kidney failure as it pertains to when they're taking insulin, it'll, it'll attack the kidneys. So dialysis is a modality and they have different types of dialysis like peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, um, they have transplant and they have other, other different types of modalities. Well, well with, my, with my 30 years of experience with uh, kidney disease, I have experienced six, all six modalities. And these modalities consist of, like what I said, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, transplant. Then they have nocturnal hemodialysis. Then they have home hemodialysis. And what I'm doing now is nocturnal home hemodialysis. And those are the, the, the last three are the ones are, um, the last two are 
at home where I do hemodialysis at home. I, I uh, have a machine and I allow, you know, I hook, hook my, myself up to machine, allow my blood to circulate within the machine to clean out my system from the impurities. Well, over the 30 years, I've explored all six modalities. Um, I've, I've pretty much am well versed with all six and can come up, you know, and, and understand the benefits of all six and the, and the consequences and even have the measurements of which one I feel is most effective out of all six. Um, but in lieu of that, what I really want to focus on in, in, in this in today's session is the importance of us as a people, once we get diagnosed with, a, with an ailment, that we go into a, a research mode of how and how learning how to master that ailment so that we won't allow that ailment to master or control us. Um, like I said, I had gotten diagnosed when I was 16 and by the and, and it was started off as, a, as acute kidney failure. But by the time I was 18, it had, it had progressed into chronic kidney failure where I needed dialysis. Um, I went on peritoneal dialysis and I, you know, I, I was on there for like three or four years and about three years and it was one of the worst experiences I've had on dialysis. But I had to study while I was, while I was um, undergoing my treatments throughout the years, I had to study what this kidney disease was and what I needed to do to be able to fulfill my goals and aspirations in life being so young, regardless of the uh, living with kidney failure. Um, I had to study it. I had to study what, what was best for my body. The doctors advised me to have, you know, do certain things that I felt would compromise my health while I was learning to live with kidney disease. It was, they were, they were prescribing me a lot of processed foods, a lot of meats. They were pres prescribing me less vegetables, less fruits, because they were saying that those fruits and vegetables had high potassium or phosphorus that my kidneys no longer could get rid of so that, so my body would, accumulate those those uh, substances and it would cause more problems and I was thinking I and I did some study and I was like well fruits and vegetables are healthy for your body when you you know when th throughout your life you prescribe fruits and vegetables and without the kidney disease I'd be prescribed fruits and vegetables to live a quality life and I thought about it and I was like why am I being prescribed for my doctors to have to eat anything else but fruit, you know, all, all other things but fruits and vegetables. So I had to study my diet. I had to study my life. And through the teachings of Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it taught me that, that we can, um, that, we, that I could survive on eating one meal a day, as long as that meal was nutrient rich and, and gave my body the necessary things that it needed, I didn't need to eat food throughout the day. Well, I incorporated that with my kidney failure and realized that if I didn't eat as much, then I would be able to eat the fruits and vegetables without any limitation for, for that one meal. And I would be able to ensure that my body was concentrated with nutrients, concentrated with the necessary vitamins and minerals that I knew that, I, that my body really needed from um, in order for me to survive and live a productive life with kidney failure. Now, when I was 16, I, I, I had goals and aspirations of going to college and, and being successful in life. And, and the average person with kidney failure, they, they tend to really give up on life. Kidneys inspire you to be motivated. It gives you, it, it emits hormones for you to stay upbeat. It, 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 uh, without the kidneys, you fall victim to depression and low energy levels. So I realized that I had to put things in my body to heighten my energy levels. And I had to do things that would enable me to still fulfill my goals and aspirations in life. Like I said, living with kidney failure. So um, I decided to study, a study about my body, study about the kidneys and implement a lifestyle that increased and improved my life to where I was able to pursue my goals and aspirations while I'm still undergoing the necessary treatments to survive on, um, with kidney disease. So um, I, like I said, I limited my food intake so that I can maximize the nutrients within my body. 
Also, I limited my food intake so I could keep a certain amount of weight down. I didn't want to accumulate so much weight. The average person on kidney disease accumulates a lot of weight. So I knew I had to keep my weight down so that the dialysis treatments would be more, uh, the better and, 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 and would be efficient, efficiently cleaning the blood in my body. I had to make sure that I ate foods that did not produce as much waste in my body for the dialysis treatments to have to remove the waste in my body. So I had to do certain things to ensure that I regulated the waste production in my body, that I regulated the weight, amount of weight I accumulated in my body. And, and one of the most important aspects of kidney failure is you cannot get, a, get rid of water because your kidneys are no longer producing urine. So I had to control my water intake. I had to manage my water. So those are the three things that I was able to focus on and realize that water, weight, and waste management were the pinnacle of the th pinnacle things that I had to monitor in order to give me the optimal life that I needed to be able to succeed. So what I had done was um, the, the, the type of changes and the things that I made in my life enabled me to go to college. I went to, Cal I, I went to community college first and then I transferred to Cal State Long Beach. And while I was at Cal, Cal State Long Beach, I was a community, I was a campus leader. I was BSU president. I was doing everything that everybody did on campus, but I was going to dialysis three times a week, eating one meal a day while keeping my studies up. So I did all this while I was in college. Then after I got into college, I mean, I got married when I was in college and then I started working full time while still on dialysis. So all of this, the, the, the uh, life that I've decided, I decided to work hard by changing a lifestyle, studying a lifestyle that would improve my health and that hopefully would even, you know, cure or, or do something to bring back my kidneys. But what I eventually ended up doing was just having a quality life that enabled me to be able to accomplish things that the average black man um, that, that even exceeded the average black man's ab ability to accomplish. I got a master's degree while I, while I had the transplant. Um, then um, I had, while I was in the master's program, I had gotten a fungal infection from the immunosuppressant drugs taking down my immune system. And I had to go be hospitalized and taken off the immunosuppressant drugs where I was put back on, on, um, on hemodialysis. And then what from there, I got out of the hospital and went you know, back into the master's program and completed the master's program. All that was because I decided to look at my ailment and, 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 and change whatever lifestyle I had before I had gotten sick to improve my life after I had gotten diagnosed with kidney failure. And that was what, that's what I wanna kind of address when it comes to our people is we get these, we have these ailments. We suffer from the most ailments in America. Black people suffer from the most heart disease, stroke, cancer, the most diabetes. We suffer from all these diseases, but then we do not change our lifestyle to, to where we can um, exist and improve our health, to prolong our life with, with these ailments that we, stand, we tend to suffer from. Now, as a child, I don't, know, I don't know how I got kidney failure, but I was the one out of my six brothers and sisters that got kidney failure. But to this day, I am the same size that I was when I graduated from high school. And I'm also the healthiest out of my brothers and sisters when it comes to my lifestyle, the foods that I eat, and the accomplishments that I've been able to uh, successfully fulfill. So it's like, I really would like to promote and, and, and advocate us to be more conscious of our body and, and to dis, or disinherit or divest ourselves from this Caucasian's death style of, in which we live right now. We eat the worst foods. We eat most throughout the day, three or plus meals throughout the day. We, we um, consume poisons throughout the day that we know are poisons, such as alcohol, you know, um, drugs, um, we consume foods that we know are unhealthy, that are shot up with hormones and foods that are cheaply made and non-nutritious. And we put these things in our bodies. And then we have a, a pandemic such as COVID and we're the ones that's falling victim to the pandemic more than any other people or group of people you know, 
on earth or in America because of these, this, this diet and this, this death style that we're living. We, we need to divest and totally disinherit the death style, the death style uh, practices of our former slave owner. We need to, you know, we're, we're, I, I do listen to my doctors. I listen to my doctors. I'm on dialysis. I have a machine at home. I clean my blood. But when it comes down to those things that I know the doctor's giving me that would not make me better or feel better, that would put more money in that doctor's pocket. For example, right now, I don't take any blood pressure medicine. The average person with kidney failure takes blood pressure medicine because of their, of their lifestyle that they lead, they still eat the same way. They still eat, this, eat the same amount of foods. They still eat the same type of foods. And they, they constantly accumulate their body with waste, water, and they gain excessive weight. So they take blood pressure medicine. Right now, I don't take blood pressure medicine and my blood pressure is far, is below 120 over 80. It's averaging 116 over 73. No blood pressure medicine. And I know people that have kid that don't have kidney failure, that have blood pressure issues. That means that the wastes, the the uh, not having clean water that they're putting through their body, sodas, a lot of salt accumulation, uh, alcohol, beer, and um, a lot of waste communication, waste uh, accumulation. All of that's causing high blood pressure, which contributes towards heart disease, which contributes towards strokes and aneurysms. And all of this, these pre-existing health conditions that we do have right now, we even have a lot of our health conditions are even undiagnosed. We have a lot of obese men, women, and children right now that have uh, unlimited amount of health conditions that they don't really know about because they don't, we don't go to the doctor. And when an epidemic comes out like COVID, or the flu, we're the ones, we're the first ones getting sick. And we're the first ones getting sick and the main ones that are, that, that the sickness is becoming fatal. Now, not only have I, you know, live a lifestyle to strengthen my immune system to ensure that I don't fall victim to what the average person with kidney disease falls victim to, but I haven't taken the vaccine. I have strengthened my immune system by taking supplemental, supplemental um, herbs and supplemental uh, nutrient, nutrient rich food, that it has heightened my, my immune system to the point where I, I haven't taken them. I haven't taken the vaccine. And the worst thing that happened to me was when right before the vaccine started, right before the vaccine started, when I was taking, I was taking, um, uh, ginger tonic with garlic, with, 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 with lemon and honey, right before the vaccine, I got pneumonia. I got pneumonia. I never had pneumonia. I never had no reason to have pneumonia. It was it was it was in the it was close to uh, the summertime when when um it was like actually it was it was not the summertime. But it was out February of 2020. It was February and March 2020. I had gotten pneumonia, and that was right when COVID had started. Like right before the week um the month before, the the week after I had gotten pneumonia. I came back to school and we had gotten, I, could, I couldn't even go back to school because school had gotten shut down due to COVID. So it was very, very close to when COVID came out. I had gotten pneumonia, and it, but whatever I had, whatever I was doing, whatever I was doing to, to increase my immune system had stopped the ammonia from progressing to COVID. So I went to the hospital, they gave me some antibiotics, told me to go back home because people were already getting, people were already being admitted into the hospital for COVID. I went back home and within a week I was ready to go back to school, but they had uh, already closed Compton, um, Compton High School down because of COVID. So that's my story about taking my life into my own hands and deciding to eat to live instead of, instead of eating for taste or, or continuing to inherit the death style habits of this former slave owner who on average lived 35 to 40 years in his own continent before he colonized the planet. His average, his average um, age was 35 to 40 years old while we were living into our, well into our hundreds respectively in our own when we had the best fruits and vegetables access before colonialism. So what I suggest is us to go back to that lifestyle that we had before colonialism as closely as possible.
I mean, I'm a living um, witness and living example of me having a pre-existing condition that I have been around, that I have seen people die from while I'm while I'm in dialysis in my at while I when I used to go to dialysis unit, I saw people dying, overweight. I saw people getting masses amount of water and edema being sucked out of their body from dialysis. Them cramping up in their heart, giving out from the stress of all the weight, waste, and water that they had accumulated over the over the few days they were off of dialysis, and I've seen our people die. And I've decided to study the ailment that I have and not allow it to control me and not to put my hands totally, my life totally in the hands of this European Western medical system. I know they are to prolong my life to make money from me. I know that the more medications that I take, the more money they make. The longer that I'm on dialysis, the more money they make. So I had to develop a lifestyle to minimize my treatment. Now my only major, tr only treatment I have is dialysis. Everything else, the medications, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really taking any medications. And I, and I just, I just strongly suggest our people to consider a lifestyle change, to consider doing things so that we can change our future, change any existing condition that we have to change our life to where we can avoid having any type of uh, health problems or conditions. I just noticed that we have faith, put our faith too much in this Western world, in a Caucasian that is a new man, a man that has an inferior immune system, a man that needs vaccinations, a man that needs all those uh, harmful things that they put in their body because their body cannot naturally make antibodies as efficiently as we, we do without being, um, without being introduced a foreign substance to, to motivate or to catalyze the production of antibodies. Our body produces antibodies fluently. We recognize foreign substances and produce the necessary substances and the necessary antibodies and chemicals in our body to attack those with a with a fury and we have that on our blood we have that in our nature we have that in our dna and i challenge us to do that i challenge us to focus more on doing something that keeps us alive longer i'm 50 years old now um i'm, I'm an educator i work full-time as, as a as an english teacher at Dominguez High School and Compton Unified School District. I co-parent with, uh, with my former wife. Um, I give my daughter everything that she needs. Um, I co-parent, I, I have my daughter every other week. I do everything that I can to be the best and strongest and most intelligent and informed black man that I can be an example for our children because I would never want any of us to experience what I've experienced with my health. But at the same time, if we are burdened with such a, uh, such a situation, an unforeseen circumstance, I'd want us to be able to put our best foot forward and practice the same type of habits and type of discipline that I've practiced to, by taking my life, taking my life in my own hands and defying this world and what it, what it defines and tells us to do when it comes to living. I was told to eat three meals a day when it comes to this, this disease. And I tell the doctors now about what I do. And every time I tell them they're enamored, they're shocked, they're, they're impressed, they're, they're, they're in awe. I go to the hospitals, I go to meet my, my, my nephrologist, I tell them they're in awe. My labs are, are the best labs. Um, they're in awe, but they don't have anything to say. And unfortunately, they wouldn't even suggest my, uh, my lifestyle to their patients knowing that this is what maintains me and sets me apart from any person with kidney failure. They're, they're in awe, they're shocked by how great I'm doing, how, how, how good my labs are, how, how much I've been able to accomplish with kidney failure. Um, I've, like I, I've done everything and, I, and I, I, I challenge us to change. I challenge us when we get cancer to change the change the lifestyle that, that got us cancer. When we get heart failure, 
changes the lifestyle that cause heart failure. When we have high blood pressure, change the foods that we eat that cause high blood pressure. When we have colon cancer, change the foods that we eat that, that has mucus build up in all those bacteria and harmful, harmful substances that destroy the colon, destroy the stomach from stomach cancer. Proper sexual practices. I, uh, I challenge us to practice the proper sexual uh, practices. We're, we're suffering from prostate cancer because of diet and because of the fact that we have exercised premature sex before our prostate was mature enough to handle sex. The prostate is a sexual organ. And when you, when you prematurely practice sexual, sexual intercourse before your sexual organs are properly mature, you risk them failing or becoming compromised like the prostate has in later ages, in your 40s. The doctors to this day haven't connected the prostate to, to premature sexual practices in the black community. We, the average black male and female practice sex in their teens. Their prostate is enduring the impact of sex and massive hormone you know, being emitted into the body or and, and everything that happens with that the prostate has to deal with during that act prematurely, which causes the prostate to fail, Pro causes the prostate to become cancerous, overworked, coupled with our diet, because the rectum is so close to the prostate, the toxic foods that we eat also infect the prostate. It intoxifies the prostate along with it being prematurely activated at a young age. The doctors still haven't made that connection and we have to study our body and study everything about ourselves so that we can counter the machinations that this world is imposing on us to destroy us, to genocidally destroy our people. But I'm addressing those who have pre-existing conditions to change our life, to change our lifestyle to change our diet, to change the way we live, to study the things that we did before we got sick and change those habits, to discipline ourselves, to endure a different dietary lifestyle. You may have to minim you know, change, minimize, cut red meats out altogether, cut out pork altogether, minimize and regulate how much chicken and fish you eat maximize the vegetables and the fruits focus on seeds for protein and legumes and beans um, there's so much things so many things you can do out there to improve your diet to minimize your chance to be to minimize yourself of being fatally affected by these diseases and that's what i am that's what i propose i propose that for for our people that's just you know first one, one part of this uh, discussion. Well, I, I have a question for you. you. You said that you had pneumonia last year before the pandemic? Yes, sir. Okay, so what, what did you do? Because I, I didn't know if I heard you or not. Well, I, evidently I didn't, but did you, did you, how long did you have it and what did you do to get rid of it? Okay, uh, I had I thought it was at first, I just treated it like it was like, okay, I got something in my lungs, some type of congestion. So I, I began to double up on ginger tonic. I had, you know, I would, I would use a French presser. I would take, uh, I would, I would grate ginger, dice it up, grate. I mean, I would, I would like skin it first, then I would grate it. I put that in the French presser with lemon and honey. And I would take that every morning and every night. Um, I did that when I started having that in my stuff in my chest and I've always like I said I've always had a pretty good diet so the important part was not having so much for this pneumonia to capitalize on like the like like mucus in your chest or and you know that those type of things would, would really harm you if you got a flu, flu or any type of pneumonia so that's what I had had done and I had that for like a week I didn't even go to the doctor I was still going to work I was like what's going on I'm like just getting weaker and weaker until I finally realized, you know what, this isn't getting any better. I went into the, I went into uh, urgent care 
and they did the COVID test on me and it came out negative, but they said, oh my God, you probably have pneumonia. So they told me to go to the emergency and they did the COVID test on me again. I didn't have COVID. I had pneumonia, it had gotten all up in my chest. And I'm thinking that I was, that because COVID was just coming out and it was in the air, it was just coming, you know, it was, it was in, it was the United States and they were still preparing for COVID and getting a lot of COVID cases in the hospital that maybe I could have got COVID, but my body fought off them, fought off COVID and just kept it at pneumonia. So what I had done was I went to the hospital, they gave me some antibiotics. I went home. I still, I took the antibiotics, still was doing the, um, the toxins and, and taking other things to, to open up my chest, to get rid of the mucus. And within a matter of four to five days, about I got up, I was in the hospital for two and a half days. Um, and I, from Wednesday to like Sunday. Um, and then that Tuesday, the next, the following Tuesday, two days later, I was ready to go back to work. But the, but I was, but the school had shut down. The school had shut down. I mean, I was only coughing a little bit, like because I still had, you know, getting rid of the mucus. But it was the it was it was the tonic. It was it was taking the tonic to open up because because uh ginger, a uh, ginger boosts the immune system and it and and it removes the the lemon and the honey removes mucus. It 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 removes any type of mucus and congestion in your lungs. So that's what I had done after I did that. I had started using uh, wild crafted iris sea moss. And if anybody knows anything about Dr. Sebi, Dr. Sebi prescribes I sea moss, iris sea moss. He uses that as a, as, a, as a cellular cleanser and cellular rejuvenator. He, he, that is the main staple of, that's one of the main staples of Dr. Sebi's um, remedies for good health is sea moss. It's a builder along with the other other uh, you know, uh, nutrient rich foods that he uses. So I've been taking iris sea moss and that's been keeping, now iris sea moss keeps all of the mucus flushed out of your system and it comes out of your lungs, your nose, your ears, your rectum, and it rejuvenates damaged cells. It gets rid of, it, it gets rid of damaged cells and rejuvenates it with, with, with healthy cells. It's, uh, it gives your body 92 of the 102 bodily uh, nutrients and bodily, bodily supplements that you need. So it gives you a whole bunch of nutrients while it's getting rid of a whole bunch of wastes at the same time. And I've been taking that along with vitamin D, along with uh, colloidal silver, along with um, black seed oil, along with uh, magnesium. So those are the things that I take. You know, we have to, but, but along with the diet, it's like, I can't take all that and then eat things that aren't conducive for my body to be able to build on. Like the vegetables are builders, cellular builders, and the fruits are cleansers. So I have to have a diet for those supplements to work at their optimum level to make my body perform at its optimal level to make me immune to any type of virus or cold or flu. So, and I've been able to function. Like I said, I have a pre-existing condition where my immune system is constantly being overworked because of the kidney failure. So I have a compromised immune system, but I'm heightening my immune system simultaneously by the diet and the natural supplements. Okay. All right, brother doctor, you have a question? I know, good information, man. Good information. Um, wow, man, that's a wow story, man. I just know that, uh, you know, uh, Roski, you and I have a, uh, a guy we grew up with, and, you know, and including him, another close friend I grew up with, they both went to the military, man, and came back out, was on dialysis, and they, they didn't make it. So I remember the last guy, you know, he called me out of the blue 10, 15 years later. And he just wanted everybody's phone number, you know. So they told me he had, uh, uh, you know, he was doing dialysis, dialysis, and he passed away like six months later, you know. So I don't know if he knew he was sick or he was just giving up. But uh, wow, man, uh, yeah, you be dodged, man. You be dodged, you know. Like you said, man, these doctors, man, they really don't care about us. 
you know, uh, I had a little ailment. Dude didn't care about me, man. I'm sitting in pain for two months. I looked up, like you said, I did my research. I looked up stuff. I saw stuff on YouTube and this doctor was describing this stuff. I went back to him and said, hey, man, this doctor over here, USC doctors, telling everybody this, give them this. Uh, oh, he wants that? So yeah, I got it. And man, I was cured in a week. Wow. You know, he said, he let me sit in pain for two months, man. You know, but yeah, man, uh, wow, man. Wow, but yeah, you're right, man. We, you know, we, we definitely got to get that, that uh, diet because, you know, I'm suffering here, but I struggle here and there. I know what I should be doing. I do it here and there. But, but you're right, man. Get back to those natural herbs and fruits and vegetables, man. And uh, that, that's the way to go, man. But, it, you know, like you said, society has it so hard, man. You know, guys on the go, you know, barely able to sleep. You know, working, everybody's working, man. You go for that fast food, man. You know, you've got enough time to get this and go to sleep and wake up four hours late and go back to work. You know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, man. And, you know, don't see a change in any, you know, but hey, hey, hey man, I like the story, man. Good, good, man. Right. Brother Mishenda. Brother Thomas. Yes, sir. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem, black man. Praise be to Allah. Man, your, 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 um, your story, your, your lifestyle, your, your time on the planet, you know, what you're saying is, is, is uh, beyond inspirational to me. And I want to, you know, thank you for imparting that knowledge. Um, a lot of people won't talk about their personal medical uh, conditions and things like that. And uh, I tell you what, uh, you know, I'm on this lifelong journey of learning still. And, uh, you know, I, you know, throughout my life, you know, I'm, I'm still in my fifties, you know, you know, um, close to departing that and moving on to another age, but, uh, I've practiced um, vegan diets and things like that. And, and when I say practice, you know, uh, uh, not as a fad, but a desired lifestyle change. And of course, you know, my journey through life, sometimes, you know, as humans, we fall off, you know, due to lack of, uh, uh, you know, whatever happens in your life, you know, you lose your discipline and, and you make excuses. But uh, at the end of the day, um, in recent times, uh, and going back to last year, you mentioned February of 2020, I was actually sick during that time for about eight days. Mm -hmm. And this was pre um, information, you know, in terms of all the COVID information. Um, I'm married to a medical practitioner, uh, provider. And uh, although she works in uh the allopathic medicine world per se, she understands the holistic side of things. And uh, part of me, uh, when I met her, I was a, had a strict vegan diet and I introduced her to some things, you know, she was uh, very receptive to that. But anyway, moving forward, you know, very inspirational. And, um, you, know, you know, you mentioned ginger and ginger tonics. You know, I've been blessed to wake up many mornings of drinking uh, uh, ginger, hot ginger, well, in, you know, in hot water with lemon yeah. and agave and ginger, turmeric and things like that. The roots, you know, and, and, and of course, living when when I was living in Compton, uh, I'm living in the south now, but uh, I visit from time to time, still have family there and things like that. But I you know, Dr. CB, Sebi and, 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 and different uh, herbalists and different folks, you know, I've, I've read some of their work and understand some of their, um, a lot of their, you know, what they're trying to get across. I believe it. Um, but again, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just kind of rambling on. It's not much I can say. Um, I'm all ears. I just want to say that, you know, I concur with um, that lifestyle um, you know, far as from a personal standpoint, I noticed that my blood pressure, uh, well, my weight, uh, 
had exceeded where I wanted to be and, you know, kind of like getting older and, and, and getting a, uh, that middle age spread and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you start paying attention to yourself, you know, like I said, knowing thyself, you know, like brother Hembrick, you know, talked about on the other show, you know, understanding how things work, how our body works and things like that. I've been a student of that for a long time now. And, uh, I must say that, um, that with the vegan diet and, you know, of course, you know, being careful with that, making sure that my body, uh, you know, I did a lot of research and continue my research to make sure that, you know, getting proper nutrients and guidance with that. And uh, I tell you, my energy was through the roof, you know, and, 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 and I felt I never felt better during those times. Well, I'm back in those times. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've actually uh, went to the doctor about a year ago and he said, you know, your blood, your blood pressure is elevated. He said, I'm not going to say you got high blood pressure, kind of like when I say you got high blood pressure, but it's, it's high enough. Like, in other words, it's not through the roof, but he said so. And he was trying to, you know, basically um, inform me about medications. Well, he met the right one. I said, look, doc. <clears throat> You know, I'm not going to sit here and debate about medicine. And I didn't disrespect him. I said, how about some exercise and diet? You know, you think that would help my, you know, so I was just kind of, I didn't let him know what I know. And um, it was a white guy, young guy, <clears throat> doctor. And he says, uh, yeah, you know, he looked at me like, what you know about exercise and diet? Kind of like, like as our people, we're not, you know, <clears throat> we live in these, uh, you know, fast food, liquor store neighborhoods, you know, and this is, you know, this is, every, you know, so when you look at the dynamics of our neighborhoods, you know, where we live, a lot of us live, some of us, you know, you know, might be able to move away and live in areas where there are whole food stores and things like that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, so I let him know that, um, hey, I know about trying to eat right. And, and, and I said, that's what I'll do. So when I went to see him again later on, I had lost about 20 pounds and my blood pressure was down. And, you know, he said, man, congratulations, you know, and I'm like, well, thank you. But the thing about it, I didn't really need him to tell me what I needed to do. I needed him to remind me what I needed to do based on that blood pressure reading and my wife, she'll get on me. But, uh, but again, I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, preaching to the choir or preaching to the preacher or whatever you want to say, just kind of giving my little thoughts just like brother DR said, or the doctor said, you know, it's, it's good information. And, uh, but, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, it, it, you have this, this uh, is being recorded, right? Brother Rasaki. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this had this, you know, not only are you articulate and you speaking very well, and a lot of times, you know, I, I guess <clears throat> uh, when you're more, informed to what you're talking about you be speak with authority because hey you know what it has done for you and so anyway um i would say this is a must listen to because i mean i've heard a lot of different um people talk about you know their personal and things like that but i think you hit you you're dead on it you know and you and you and you articulate it in a in a very easy under e you know easy to understand way and uh, I tell you what, um, you know, I'm not blowing smoke, but as a result of this, you have inspired me to like take my game to another level, to continue to take my game to another level. And to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, what Brother Rasa Key say, the theme of the show is each one teach one. Well, you know, what you're saying is uh, it, it's, a, it's a must hear. And uh, you didn't, like you say, you didn't invent it, but it's your story. And uh, you can, I can feel the truth out of it, and the authenticity of it. And uh, you know, I don't need any more, you know, because you know, reading your energy and you know, you you know, you you just your your just your appearance and your in your delivery, you know. Thank you, brother. We'll do a lot. Thank you, brother Masinda. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. And uh, I wish brother brother Ra was here, um, because I know that he's he's um struggling with kidney failure as well, and when he was um when he first started got got diagnosed to the point where he needed to go on um dialysis he had contact his son home um 
Omar contacted me and asked me to talk to him. And I did talk to him about it because he was considering doing home hemodialysis as well. But he just didn't, I guess he didn't have the support system to be able to do it. I mean, I do mine individually. Um, that's another thing that doctors are really, over, you know, kind of enamored with. My, I'm, I'm divorced. My wife's not here. Even when I was married, I was doing dialysis by myself. You know, usually they train you with, with somebody to kind of help you along while you're doing dialysis. I, I totally got trained by myself. I do it by myself. I'm here by myself right now. My daughter's with her mom. She, I'll have her next week. So, so it's about autonomy, Brother Machinda and Brother Doctor. It's about you take in your own life in your own hands. You use the information from this devil. Use this information from this cave dweller. He got valuable information. He got technology, but that's it. I use his technology. I use his dialysis unit. That's what I use. But when it comes to wholesome living, he can't give me advice for wholesome living. This devil has doctors that smoke cigarettes. This devil has doctors that drink regularly while they're operating on you. This devil is not qualified. He's not qualified to tell us anything about our health. The only thing he's qualified for is diagnosis. And he's a perfectionist at diagnosis. Why is that? Because he is, he is the epitome of disease. He is the most diseased human being on the planet. So he is, an, he is a perfectionist at diagnosis. See, he's the first one that had chronic, his people had chronic kidney failure, chronic organ, organ failure, chronic alcoholism, chronic li liver failure chronic prostate, chronic lung cancer, chronic, they brought syphilis, they brought, they brought gonorrhea, they, they brought animal diseases to us because they were screwing animals in Europe. Gonorrhea is an animal disease. Syphilis is an animal disease. That's what you get from screwing animals. So they are very good at diagnosis. So the doctor diagnosed me. They gave me a treatment I used the technology, but then they gave me a diet. And I looked at the diet and I researched it. And I found out that everything that they gave me was processed foods, meat. They told me to eat red meat because it didn't have that much phosphorus and potassium. It had protein in it. I said, my body can't, I said, the average human body can't even digest red meat. I said, so you want me to put a meat in my body that causes more waste production so that the dialysis won't even be able to clean my blood efficiently because I have all this toxin, toxin that has accumulated within my body, which makes the dialysis not even as efficient as it need to be. But right now my treatments are so efficient. My face is lighter than any dialysis patient's face. You know, I have my, light, I have my natural com complexion because I'm getting, my blood's getting clean properly. If you look at your, any of your friends that were on dialysis, God forbid, that had passed, how was their complexion? Did you see the dark circles in their eyes, the darkness in their continents? Because the waste buildup had accumulated such at high levels that it had, it had affected and darkened their skin three or four shades darker than normal. Those are signs that your body's overwhelmed with waste. And they had, they had a, a massive amount of weight on their body, which means they accumulated a lot of water. And the dialysis treatments was not getting rid of the water. So they had accumulated a lot of water that had put pressure on their lungs and on their heart, which, which increases heart failure. And that's what happens with dialysis pain. They get heart failure and they get heart, atta heart, heart attacks because they're, they've accumulated a lot of water, edema that's, that has surrounded their, their, their heart and over accumulated mucus buildup in their lungs. So the water, the waste, and then the weight accumulation because they haven't changed their diet and they're constantly accumulating more weight. So they're getting weight, a lot of abundant weight. And you know us right now, we're eating three meals a day and we don't have the, the same metabolism levels that we have when we're younger. So we, our metabolism slows down and our weight accumulates because we have the same diet that we had when we were younger, thinking that we could have that diet into our older age when our metabolism slows down and the weight and the food just stays in our body now. It's not even getting burned off. So there's a lot of things that we have to do to prepare ourselves for age. I'm 50 years old. 
50 have the body of when I was 18. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 5'11", and I weigh 140 pounds, same weight that I weighed when I was in high school. You know, and it's just optimized my health. It enabled me to go through. Now, it took me a while to get through college. I was in college. I was I, I started in 19, the spring of 89. I got my degree, my bachelor's degree in the the spring of 19, of 2000. So that's like almost uh, 10 years, over 10 years. And that's because I was on dialysis. I had a few surgeries that I was dealing with because of the dialysis treatments that I had. I had, I had a peritoneal dialysis. I had to get surgery off of peritoneal dialysis. They left a, a, a fluid in my body from peritoneal dialysis. It expanded into a 15 pound sack of blood that they had to cut out my body. And when they cut it out my body, they were trying, they were, they were saying that I could die because I don't have that much blood in my body because all the blood was accumulated in the sack. But I told them that I didn't want a blood transfusion because at that time AIDS was being spread through blood transfusions. So I had the surgery where they where it looked like I was pregnant. I had to cut the big 15 pound cyst out of my 135 um, pound body frame. They cut it out. I didn't bleed, didn't need a transfusion. So I had surgeries. I had a few surgeries when I was like going through kidney failure. But every time I went in the hospital, I would heal three days after I got out of the hospital, no matter what kind of surgery I had, no matter what kind of kidney related surgery I had. It increased my ability to heal post op, post operation. This lifestyle that I've that I've that I've uh, inherited that I've studied had increased my ability for my body to heal from any trauma that it experienced. So I'm telling my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, I'm telling my brothers, I'm telling y'all that we need to cut this devil loose from anything that he tells us to do as it pertains to optimal health. He is not qualified. He is not qualified. The only thing he's qualified to do is give us the technology like this dialysis machine that I'm on. But when it comes to cancer, he's not qualified to give to get rid of cancer. I mean, we could we could rely on him putting a, a radioactive poison inside of us to try to cancel out poison by putting a poison inside of us by that, you know, uh, chemotherapy. You know, they say in Asia, you know, how do you how do you how do you um, get rid of a poison in your body? Well, you put a poison in your body to cancel the poison out. That stuff, you don't, you don't have to do that. You change your lifestyle to that of a lifestyle that will kill the cancer in your body itself. It'll take a little while longer, but create an environment within your body where cancer cannot exist. Create an environment in your body where viruses cannot exist. Flu does not exist inside of me. COVID does not exist inside of me. When I could, when I was supposed to get COVID from my pre-existing condition, my body stopped it at pneumonia. Just like yours, Brother Machinda, yours stopped, your body stopped it. You didn't get COVID during the time when you should have gotten COVID, like when I should have gotten COVID, our body stopped it. And ever since then, I've been saturating my body with, with uh, supplements, with holistic supplements to where I do not need any type of foreign substance to compromise my immune system or compromise my body's ability to create antibodies already that's preventing me from getting any type of an ailment that this Caucasian devil has created. Oh, because oh, COVID is a man-made disease. It's man-made. It started in a laboratory. That's where they, that's where it started. Whether it was Wuhan or wherever they decided, wherever, wherever place they gave us, uh, you know, information or wherever it, it, it initiated, that's not natural. Natural viruses do not start, do not begin in a laboratory. They do not start in a laboratory. So, you know, I, I, I just thank you for the opportunity to, to just give this information. And I, pr I wish Brother Rod was here so that he could, you know, know that that there's, you know, my elder brother has an opportunity to still have an optimum life, but you can't put any poisons in your body. You can't even drink wine, brother. 
You can't even drink wine. Don't drink wine, beer. Don't drink soda. You can't even drink soda, carbonated. Don't drink, drink juices and water. I'm telling you, it's like, I, I'm just, I just try to bear witness. And I, I felt brother, brother Rasaki, I felt it was necessary for me to just, you know, take it to a whole other level today. And, you know, I have, a, I have a whole bunch of information about you know, I, the next one. If, if Allah willing, I want to talk about education because I'm an educator and I was going to talk about education today, but then I saw, you know, the DMX, he passed, you know what I'm saying? We have, all we have, Hank Heron, he passed. You know, we have people dying that maybe would not have had needed to die if they would have taken their own lives in their own hands. You know, we're, we, we, we have, you know, shock G just died. You know what I'm saying? We got brothers dying. We got, you know, Cicely Tyson died. You know what I'm saying? We got brothers and sisters dying because of because they're not their body is not ready to deal with anything that this world has to deal with we're supposed to be the superior apex predator we are the superior organism on the planet earth we are supposed to be capable to adapt and exist any and all things that's what makes us superior so we're not supposed to be extinct because of any type of a disease or any, the way the environment or anything in the habitat or any environments change, we're supposed to be able to adapt. So COVID, we're supposed to be able to adapt. We're supposed to be able to, to, to naturally adapt. And we're dying off. You know what I'm saying? We're dying off. So I just wanted to kind of share that, brother. I wanted to use this platform to really be open and honest about like, look, you know, I'm living, I'm living proof. You know, Brother Mashinda, Brother Doctor, y'all know, people die from what I have. I've seen people die from what I have. I've, 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 been, in the, I've been in a dialysis unit and saw a man and a woman die two or three stations down from me. I've seen it. But when I, when I, when I dialyze, I only have to take a minimum amount of wastes out of my body a minimum amount of water out of my body. I am not stressing my body to remove waste, water, and, and my weight is not so high. My dialysis time is at the minimum amount of time because I don't have the mass of body mass. See, I don't have the body mass required to have like, you know, the the more weight you have, the longer you have to be on dialysis. You get people that are like 300 pounds on dialysis for four to five hours because the, the blood has to be cleansed in that girth of a body that they're dialyzing. I'm 140. I'm on dialysis. Um, I do home nocturnal. So I'm on for six hours, three days a week because it's at not, I'm at home. Which, is, which means I, I make my schedule, surround my schedule around my dialysis treatments. Now you hear about people going to a unit for three hours, three days a week, but they're not getting clean, clean right. They're dying using that treatment because they're not being cleansed properly. And their diet is not conducive for that limited amount of cleansing. I'm getting over cleansed for my diet. So I'm getting cleansed to the optimal level, six hours, and I only require three, which means I'm getting three hours more making my cleanse, you know, comparable to that of a person that has kidneys. So, you know, everything that I do is to make sure that I live an optimal life comparable to somebody that does not have kidney disease. Okay, brother, brother Thomas, is that six hours total a week? Or... No, it's 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 eighteen hours. Okay, eighteen hours. I do um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. I get on at about six, and I get off at about one o'clock in the morning, six p.m. to one in the morning. And I do now. Now, when I was on home, when I was on nocturnal dialysis, I was on for. I did it four times a week for four hours. Uh, because the reason why it, it goes slower. 
the machine goes slower because it's a smaller machine and that and um the machine at the unit goes faster but that's 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 not good because it's going fast and the cleanse is not a quality cleanse my machine goes slower and i'm on longer so it's taking more impurities out at a at a slower and consistent rate and my diet means i'm not accumulating a lot of wastes a lot of water and my weight is so low the cleanse is at an optimal cleanse i mean i feel energized i don't feel tired after dialysis like a lot of people do i mean if you guys really know about the symptoms of the average person on dialysis it's fatigue it's major depression it's, it's, it's uh, you know, they, they, they're limiting they, they, their diet. They can't really eat anything because their diet is accumulating a lot of salt. They're eating three meals a day, which means they're accumulating a lot of weight and a lot of wastes and a lot of water. I limit that one meal a day. And that's, that's according to the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, if anybody knows anything about the Nation of Islam, we're prescribed to eat one meal a day. I maximize my nutrients. I maximize, I, I mean, and, and, and what brother Machinda, you were talking about like not having enough time to cook. I cook a batch of bean soup, brother, that lasts me three or four days. You know, and I make sure that if I have any like fish, cause I eat fish, any fish or any other vegetables, the bean soup is always there. Cause it, it's a, it's a, it's something to build. It's, it's a, it's such a concentrated bean. It gives you nutrients and it builds your body up, it builds your immune system up. So I take the bean soup that I, that I, and I, and I fish, and I have maybe some greens, some, some, some broccoli, you know, some cabbage, cauliflower, spinach. Those things right there is what any kidney patient will tell you they're not allowed to eat. The doctor tells them not to eat that. I'm like, nah. I eat everything. I eat everything the doctor tells me not to eat. And the doctor <laughs> sits there and is shocked at my labs. There, Because we get monthly labs. I go to the doctor, I get my blood drawn, I get monthly labs to see the quality of my dialysis treatment. And they're like, oh my God, your labs are just so great. But guess what though, brother? Rasaki, they're not prescribing the other patients my lifestyle. Now, why wouldn't a doctor prescribe their patients, my lifestyle, when they have a kidney patient 30 years in, 30 years in, that has the best, that's living the best life that they could that, that he could possibly live, but they're not prescribing him. But I, I go into the uh, dialysis, I go into the, my nephrologist, and I still see on the wall the same dietary requirements, processed foods. What, what did you say earlier? Death style death style <laughs> i i we 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 should we should incorporate a lifestyle that we had before european colonialism or what i call cancerism because they cancerized our continents but we should inherit re-inherit that diet and reinstill that longevity of a lifestyle i don't know how i don't know how long i'm gonna live i don't know i don't know but all i can say is this i can honestly tell you all the modalities that I've been through, I am living my best life now. I've never felt so great and I'm never getting a transplant again. I had a transplant and the immunosuppressant drugs almost killed me. My immune system got so low, I had gotten bitten by mosquitoes because I live across the street from some type of a lake. The, my nephrologist, I kept on getting these lumps in my legs the nephrologist would not diagnose what they were until they became so infectious. They, um, I, they, my leg became real swollen with a whole bunch of mucus or whatever, and it spread throughout my legs and went up my spine into my brain where it evolved from cryptococcal, like it was a cryptococcal fungus to now I had cryptococcal meningitis because the cryptococcal fungus went into my brain from my spine, went from my leg to my other leg, to my spine, to my brain. I was in the hospital for three months. The doctor said that I could, I may not even come out like being able to speak or anything, but like I told you, the lifestyle that I lived 
enabled my body to heal. I got off the immunosuppressant drugs, the kidney that I had failed, and I was put back on dialysis and my body healed itself. I oh. survived cryptococcal meningitis and I looked it up. People were dying from it. People die from meningitis. You could look it up. People die from men meningitis is when fungus gets into your brain and infects your brain. I had fungus in my brain and survived it. Went back to teaching and still, still on my, you know, on my, on my dean, you know, still able to think clearly and quickly. So I, I, I really like, we have to take our lives in our own hands. 30 years, bro. 30 years, brother. Rasaki, 30 years, brother. I got diagnosed when I was 16, and that was in 1987, 1987, 88, about 87. And then by 1989, I was on dialysis, 18 years old, 18, 1989. We in 2021 uh, right now. So that is like, wow over almost what it's over 30 years what 32 something mm -hmm. like that now yeah. i want to ask you you was talking about the bean soup what yes, what beans do you use navy bean it's the small na smallest white navy bean you don't use the nordic bean you don't use a small bean use the navy bean navy bean okay and they call it and, and matter of fact they call it the navy bean because in in the uh, service, they in the navy they used to use it because it was it had a it had a counter radioactive property. It would counter it would reduce any radio radioactive exposure that you had. It just it saturates the body with nutrients. The small navy bean and and um yo I could hit you up I could email you the uh, MGT. Uh, navy bean soup recipe bro because that's what i do and it's i got oh man it's it's so good it is so so good uh brother miss cindy if you could put your email in chat i'll i'll email you the recipe as well brother miss cindy i'll email you the recipe as well bro it's so easy and it only takes a few vegetables the bean i put bean carrot celery onion garlic and bell pepper and I only use like four seasonings. I used I use sea salt, or you could use I use either sea salt or seasoned salt. I use cumin. I use um, oh yeah, garlic is another thing that I use. That's another I use chopped garlic. I use cumin, sea salt, a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper, and granulated garlic. Those are only four. Those are the only four ingredients I use, and then I use. Uh, it comes up in, in tomato, tomato paste. Tomato. I'm telling you, it's real simple. Soak them beans 24 hours. 24 hours. Real simple. And if you do that, bruh, do that every time. Just, just have that as your side staple with every meal that you have. You don't even have to be a big bowl. Just be a. Just be about a cup, about a half a cup to a cup, and you'll be straight. I'm telling you. That right there would just give your body the natural nutrients that you uh, that you need. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you. Uh, let me let me put let me um, type down your write down your uh, your email real quick, brother, so I can get yeah. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna email it to you, brother um, brother Machindi. Trust me, bro. This is life staple. This is the life staple of of my diet right here. Keeps me keeps me youthful. Keeps me strong. Keeps me uh, vibrant. And it fills me up. It fills me up real good. So, that, you know, not too much, but it fills you up real good to where you can enjoy the other foods that you have for dinner. Hey, uh, Brother Thomas, my wife is in here. <laughs> she's working and she's listening. And <laughs> she says, does it create gas? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm no, over no. Good, good question. Awesome question. <laughs> what I do is this. Trust me, the nation, we have remedied that. What you do is, after you soak your beans, you put them inside your pot and you boil the beans. And that foam that, there's a foam that's gonna build up on the top of the beans. 
you take a strainer and you scoop, you, you let it boil until you scoop out all the foam. The foam is just gonna keep on accumulating until you just scoop it out, scoop it out, scoop it out, scoop it out. So what I do is I scoop it out until I don't have, until I barely have any more foam inside of the beans. That foam is the fart. The foam is the fart. You never cook your beans with the foam. And if you don't boil those beans, if you don't boil that foam off, the foam is just gonna stay inside of the bean. And you're gonna fill it, boil that foam off, take a strainer, scoop it off and just, you know, cause what I do is I'll have a little bowl on the side. I'll just scoop it and put it in the bowl, scoop it and put it in the bowl. Sometimes I get a little of the beans inside of the strainer. I'll go rinse those off, put the beans inside, keep on sc scooping that foam off. It'll take about five to seven minutes constantly, but, but keep on having the beans boil. Keep on having the beans boil while you're scooping the foam off until you see the beans boil and there's barely any foam left. The foam, you will take away. It'll take away the gas. Then take it down to simmer. Cook the beans without any seasoning. Don't cook, don't put any seasoning in the beans. Don't put any type of uh, other ingredients in the beans. You put all that in when the beans are cooked fully. Once they're cooked fully, you add the tomato paste, you add the seasonings, and the last thing you add after you've been stirred and you didn't you know, you, the, the, the tomato paste is disintegrated. You add the vegetables and let them cook for about 40 minutes. You always want to put the vegetables in last so they can still have a little bit of their crunch and color. That is where you get, don't ever cook the beans, don't ever cook the vegetables in the beans down to where the vegetables are all discolored and soft like the beans. You don't do that. The only thing that needs to be soft is the beans. The vegetables, don't it, they don't have to have like a real hardcore crunch like stir fry, but they can have a barely enough crunch in it to where you're like, oh, I could taste where you could taste the flavor of the vegetables inside of the bean soup. That's why I use the carrots. The carrots you cook the carrots where they're soft, but have a little bit of firmness to them. Your vegetables should be soft, but with a little bit of firmness to them, where you can still taste the vegetables and still have to chew the vegetables. You shouldn't be having to just you know, suck on the vegetables to where they're like that soft. If the vegetables are so soft where you ain't got the chew, you've overcooked the vegetables. But I'll get you the I'll get you the recipe. It's uh it's it's so like and the flavor is so awesome. I'm gonna definitely gonna try it. Matter of fact, my wife yes. gonna help me. <laughs> Machinda, you're absolutely correct. The, 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 the navy beans that are used in the bean pie, most definitely. Yes, sir. And yeah, uh, yeah, yo, um, want me to? I'll I'll, I'll email them to you too, brother, brother Rasaki. I do that too, brother. Please. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man. It's a, and it's it's a this like like what I'm telling you, bro. It's a necessity. It's like the only time that I may chill out on the navy bean is when it's like really hot in the summertime. Cause you know it's hot, but yeah. all and that's maybe just three times less than less than three months out of the year. So it's pretty much two two and a half months out of the year. I may not be all up on the bean soup, but pretty much pretty much ten nine and a half to ten months out of the year, I'm eating bean soup pretty much every week. Okay. It gives well, that's me, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm I'm like so, you know. Yes, sir. All right. I wanted to go to Brother California. Brother California, question for Brother Thomas? Uh, oh, shit, man. I, I do that. No, I don't. Okay. I was unmuted. Uh, I thought I lost lost um my opportunity to speak but yeah um sounds good i i i attempted to um change my eating habits to a, a healthy lifestyle to become a vegetarian and vegan yes, sir. and i um end up not not sticking with it 
And I had a, a therapist or a, um, I was in a weight um, loss program yes, sir. that was um, vegan, vegan, vegetarian, and to improve my lifestyle, eating habits or my eating lifestyle. And in the process while I was um, working on it, I had one guy tell me, which was a nutritionist, He told me that I was eating too much fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and, well, at least too much fruit, because I was eating. That's, that's possible. Eating two to three, well, eating fruit three and four times a day, two and three servings at a time. That's possible. Uh, um, but in the process of that, I had, the, I, I had energy like, Brother Macinda said, you know, I was my energy level was off the off the charts. And the minute I, I, I followed his his recommendations, you know, the energy level dropped. Now again, and then my weight, my weight also picked up. So to, 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 to ask the question of we can't hear you, brother California. Can you ask that question again, big brother? I think something's wrong with the speaker, though. My, okay. Um, my um, question was that I don't know if you heard me when I said I I, I was eating fruit. Yes, sir. I did. I did. My serving, my serving to fruit. Yes, sir. And vegetables. And um, I was told that um, I was eating too much. Then my my um, my level, my my energy level dropped after I I, I heeded to his recommendations. Um, any suggestions of what I possibly could do to to uh, adhere to to increase my level of energy, like I I, I, I had even the, the amount of vegetables and fruits that I was eating, um, that what you would think that wouldn't be detrimental to my or wouldn't be a, uh, harmful to my, my um, health. Definitely, yes, sir. Thanks a lot, brother Cali California, for your your question. Mm -hmm. What I do because you know one thing about kidney failure is is it does because I don't have you know. The kidney, on the top of the kidney is the adrenal gland. And you know what adrenaline is, right, y'all? Adrenaline is that hormone that shoots through your body when you're ready to whoop somebody's ass. You know, when, you know what I'm saying? When, 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 you, get, when you get that, uh, that fear or that, that protective, you know, either fight or flight mentality, adrenaline kicks in and make you run faster or fight better. Well, because my kidneys don't work, the adrenal gland doesn't really shoot off like that. So what I take, and, and, and I know why the fruit did you so well, it was because the fruit are saturated with a lot of those body minerals and re mineral requirements that we need. But at the same time, a lot of fruit have a lot of sugar in it too. So the sugar also gives you an energy boost and the um, other vitamin minerals do. And that the problem with the sugar is if you're eating sugar in other foods, compiled with the sugar that you're eating from the fruits, that can give you risk of getting being diabetic because you're having a lot of sugar in your body and your pancreas is overworking itself to keep the body balanced. What you can do though, is I, the wild crafted Irish sea moss is what I use. It's a Irish crafted, Irish, I, it's the wild crafted Irish sea moss that I get. And I make, it, it's from the ocean. Uh, I get it from, uh, I get mine imported from Caribbean islands. And they get it off of the rocks, off of the rocks of, uh, the, of uh, I think it's the Atlantic Ocean. And, um, oh no, the Pacific Ocean. And I rehydrate it and I make a gel out of it. And I'm gonna show you what, I'm gonna show you how it looks. And this gives your body 92 of the 102 body require body uh, minerals that are required in your body and this gives me unlimited amount of energy i mean i could just imagine what it's going to do for somebody that that has kidneys if it's doing all this for me when i don't have kidneys 
it gives me so much energy. But like I said as well, I have a diet to maximize the wildcrafted Irish sea mosses effects on my body. I have, so, so when you take wildcrafted Irish sea moss, you gotta make sure you're, you know, I would, I would, you know, I would prescribe you not to eat three meals a day, maybe like, you know, one or two meals a day. And if it is, you know, a small meal during the day of something like fruit or, or a grain or a vegetable or something like that can be easily digested and then have a nice dinner saturated with a lot of nutrients. Maybe, you know, I'm a pescatarian, so I eat fish sometimes with vegetables, beans, soup and stuff of that, that nature. And it helps, it helps maximize the iris sea mosses affectability in my body. So what I do is I take that and it gives me energy on, on a whole other level. Um, and it, and it, and while at the same time, it cleanses out my, the mucus from my lungs, keep my lungs open, keeps my, any type of mucus buildup open, keeps my colon open. It regulates your colon. The iris sea moss removes anything you have in your colon and regulates your, your bowel movements naturally. It also, the, the iris sea moss gel, it gives your semen lubrication to where it heightens and increases the motility of your spermatozoa. Man, I'm telling you, this, I'm a, let me, can I go get it for a second, Brother Rasaki? Can I yes, go? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's, uh, I, my wife and I take sea uh, moss. So. This, this, this is how it comes. This is how it comes right here. It comes like this. These are dehydrated. What you do is you hydrate these with spring water and lime for like oh, about 10 hours. I do it for overnight. And then when I do that, I grind it up inside of a blender and I make a paste out of it. And let me show you the paste. Yes, sir. Definitely want to check that Irish sea moss. I have some, but it's pre-made. So now this is the gel. See, and it's from, it's from the purple. I combined the purple with the gold. And it's like, it's, it's almost has the, a jello consistency. It's a jello. Okay, show, show us those packages again. How expensive is this? Okay. Or how inexpensive is this? Oh, these are like, now, now check this out. $35, $35. Now look, this one right here will make one gallon of this. One, um, two ounces of this. And, and this comes in eight ounces. So two, this comes in eight ounces. Two ounces of this makes 32 ounces of this. So this has a total of eight ounces in it, which will make a whole gallon of your gel. So I make, I make like two ounces. I, I do two ounces every, uh, every time I make a batch. Now, same, now, now the purple is so saturated with nutrients, you only need one ounce that'll make 16, that'll make two, uh, that'll make 32 ounces of this. So I combine them together. And what I can do, what I can do, Brother Rasaki, is I could, email, I could text you all the information on where I get it, the instructions on how to make the gel, and you know I could even, I'll, I'll, I got these containers off of, off of Amazon, and I'm telling you, that's what I use. And Brother Cal, Brother California, that's what I use. Um, if I, if you could give me your email address as well, I will email you all the information based upon where I get this and how to make how to make the gel perfectly every time and you know the information you need to put it in the containers. Okay, okay. Cuz this this will cure, I'm telling you, bro. This maximize as an educator. You know how it gets brother Rasaki when you're sitting there sometimes and you get tired. This boosts my energy to exponentially where I'm 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 keyed up I'm hyped throughout the whole day while I'm teaching. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me put this back ready real quick. Yes. Now, I'm, not 
I'm not tech savvy with using Zoom. Uh, Brother Dr. Uh, Key. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll forward that email to you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, Brother Doctor. Brother Doctor, you have another comment? Or? Oh, no, man. It's all, all good information, man. Uh, yeah, man. I'm telling I, you. Uh, one of those brother, Brother Thomas. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a uh, YouTube channel? Are you putting this information out? Because I know, man, us as black people, yes, sir. you know, we don't look up this stuff until we get the helmet. We get sick. And <laughs> That's true. As soon as we get sick, we go to YouTube and books. Mm -hmm. And it'd be good to see a brother saying how he's conquering something, man. Because, that. you know, uh, like you're saying, man, you know, uh, what's good for the brothers, you know, what, what whites do, not good for the brothers. You know, our, our system is different. That's right, exactly. Because you're, you're motivational, man, where I know if someone got sick, I came down with this ailment, when they start their YouTube check, your, 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 your stuff will pop up, you'll be motivational, mm. and you got a 30-year track record, man. I mean, I don't know the numbers of far how many brothers get this or how many have it, but I can tell you right now, man, I'm pretty sure it's a couple of, couple of thousand brothers every day looking yep. on YouTube for someone and information. All they send is white faces and getting that wrong information where we need you, brother. You get on there, put something up. I don't know if you get with Ross and Key. Y'all get something and put this on YouTube and label it, you know. It, it's going on YouTube. Label, label it where people can look and find it and get healthy and live, man. Because I wish I had it for my, my, the two brothers I grew up with, man. You know, had that information or motivation, man. You know, keep going. So you need to get this up on YouTube, brother. Well, this, this is going on YouTube, brother, brother doctor. Yeah, bro. Thank you, brother. I, I mean, I appreciate it. I, it. You know what? God's speaking through you. And I just think it's, you know, with brother Rasaki, he's gotten me out there. I've been praying on it for a while, and it's just time. You're right, Brother Dr. Man. And by the will of Allah, man, I will definitely allow myself to be used as a vehicle to get this information out. And I thank you for your words, brother. I praise be to Allah. Thank you for your words and your comments. I I love this opportunity. And um, please just get it, you know, anything that I can do, any information that I have that can help, you know. You can go through Brother Ro oh, Okay, I got Brother Cows. You could go, um, just, I mean, I'm, I'm here, definitely uh, here and, and, and willing to, you know, be a resource for you, big brother. Yeah, well, you you know, we're we going to do our thing. And and uh, when you, you know, whatever you do to get the information out, we're going to appreciate it, whatever vehicle. Thank you, big this, brother. You, you know you have a vehicle here. And then yes, there's, sir. you know, if you want to go beyond that, that's beautiful too. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, big brother. Now, now, did you want to speak about anything else? I know my wife was asking, do you have any other recipes? Yes, I do. Yes, we do. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, what I can do is uh, I can, I do have quite a few of them. Um, I'll email them to you. I mean, I'll email you a few more of the recipes. Okay, can you mention, not, mention not one more? Not necessary. Um, what I, what I, you know, I, what I, I guess what I tend to do is, um, I mean, I, I work with, we, we're, we're prescribed to eat cabbage too. Cabbage is a good source. So I, I have, you know, I, I use a, a lot of curry. I have a Jamaican, a Jamaican cabbage recipe. Um, I also have, there's a, there, there's a, uh, we're also prescribed to eat, um, eggplant, eggplant Parmesan recipe. You know, that that kind of uh, uh, yeah, and then you know I I eat fish, so I have like a, a I have a, a good salmon recipe where it's either blackened and blackened barbecue salmon recipe, a few other things of that nature. So I mean, like I I I eat really good. I eat really you know I have, you know I eat really good. I just don't I just make sure that it has all the right vegetables and everything. And I mean I lasagna recipe. Um, oh. I mean. I'm really, I, I I eat very very good. I make sure that I make sure that one meal, not only is healthy but tastes really good. 
you know. I, I, I got to give my wife props for one recipe. Well, she had, she she's an excellent cook, but she made a vegetable lasagna for me. See what I'm saying? Yes, and sir. It was it was it was so awesome, and I can't wait <laughs> to get it again. Yeah, because yes, yes, it, it had a wonderful taste to it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That that bean the bean soup is our staple though. It's like uh, it's our staple. That's what. Okay, that's I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try the bean soup. Yeah, that's our staple. Yeah. And then, but it, you know, thing is though. Whatever you want to put with it, it's like, like you know, like you could have the bean. You could even have bean soup with with your lasagna. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just it, it's like it's like uh, it's like you know, you go to a restaurant and you either have a soup or a salad. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like that kind of, and and you don't have to have much. It's just a nice little half cup to a cup. You know, with a side dish. It could be a side dish or it could be the main dish. I'm telling you. And you know, with, with nice piece of bread, you know, wheat, nice, nice piece of wheat bread, toasted. Oh man, that's it's just just awesome. Okay, was okay. Was was there anything else you wanted to share this evening beyond the the? Uh... Actually, you know, I'm cool. I'm cool. It's a, you know, I'm getting close to uh, breaking fast today. You okay. Know, about in about a uh, you know another fifteen minutes or so. So I'm, 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 I'm humble. I'm humble. I'm, I'm thankful that I've been able to share this information with, with you again. I look forward anytime you need, anytime you have an opening. I am, I'm, I'm very interested in, and eager to participate along with us working on future ventures together, Brother Rasaki, man. I, I yes, thank sir. you for getting me out there, sir. Yes, I, I appreciate all of your information. It's, it's uh, you know, your your, the lifestyle that you present is is excellent with your with your ailment, but uh, yes, it's just wonderful. I'm I'm glad to be able to to have you on, and but it, it, this is this is your venue too. Oh, crazy! Okay. So, so yeah, so uh, I'm gonna go to Brother Machinda and end with him. See if you have a question or comment. No, I just want to say I look forward to the recipes and uh, <laughs> and uh, continue this journey with you. You know that's uh you know it's 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 you a great uh, support system for you know uh, like brother doctor say you'll be a great support system for a lot of people and I know you are because I mean you're not the only we're not the only ones I'm sure that gets this great information and uh, you know but I really appreciate it you know um, out of all the you know, I think we've had some great shows with uh, the CEN network. I said, but this is one of the great ones, you know, that I, I will, you know, remember uh, your authenticity and your, your, your sincerity and, you know, giving your personal testimony uh, about, you know, not only your health, but how to eat to live and not live to eat. And, you know, um, I, I'm not a member of the nation but I'm very in tune. I got great friends that are members, MGT and members. One of my great buddies that I talk to regularly. And um, so I'm, I understand a lot of the teachings just um, from a, you know, uh, from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, again, you know, you haven't, uh, you, you, you know, people say, well, is he talking religion or this and that? No, you're talking life. You're talking you know, something that uh, we can all relate to and, and, and you're breaking it down to a point that to where it's understandable. And that's the most thing that, that I uh, appreciate about this. And uh, I just uh, appreciate your gentle, genuine uh, uh, contribution, man. And you just keep it up and uh, you stay strong and, yes, and uh, I'm with you. Thank you, Brother Machindi. You need something, you holler. <laughs> Definitely, Big Brother. And I'll get that information to you as soon as, inshallah, I know later than tomorrow, Big Brother. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you all. Praise you. I like to, I like to just say, Brother Rasaki, man, and all the young, all the brothers on, thank you so much. I'm like so elated. And, and um, I thank Allah for just guiding my words in my heart. And I thank Allah for Brother Rasaki creating this platform for our community to enlighten us, to, to educate us, to inspire us, to persevere, 
Thank you, Brother Ra. Man, may Allah bless you, sir. Likewise, brother. I appreciate you. And, you know, keep doing your thing, man. And we're going to hook up again soon. Yes. <laughs> yes so, uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody. Dr. Brother, Brother Machinda, Dr. Brother Doctor, Brother California. And uh, now we're going to meet next week on Tuesday. And uh, it's, uh, Brother, brother Muko is coming back on. And uh, his topic is anti-Asian hate. So he's going to speak about that, you know, that popped up, uh, you know, with, with the people doing things against Asians. So he's going to talk about that and uh, we're going to listen and, and, you know, hopefully his perspective is just as well as this one, which I think it will be. So, but yeah, so each one teach one and everybody have a good evening. Yes, sir. Some